Now, one of the most interesting activists in this debate is just 17 years old, is Will Shackle, who founded the first youth-led campaign for nuclear energy. It's called Nuclear for Australia. It has a lot of people raving about it, like Dick Smith. And he's given evidence to a Senate committee on nuclear power when he was just 16, 16 years old, as well as appearing on Sunrise, Current Affair, 2GB, 3AW, ABC Radio, here at Sky News, and on the ABC's Q&A. Twice! I suspect the ABC was hoping he'd make a fool of himself, but no luck there at all. Joining me is Will Shackle. Will, uh, thank you so much for your time. Look, the CSIRO saying nuclear power is much more expensive than wind and solar would take 15 years to save us. Too late. Um, do you believe it? What do you know at 17 that the CSIRO does not know at all? Well, look, Andrew, a lot of experts are going to canvas all of the limitations of the Gen Cost report. But I think one of the most concerning things that it, it only takes a 17 year old to work out that there are major issues with the report. And one that I'll direct your viewers attention to is something that you mentioned was the fact that they've incorrectly assumed that a nuclear power plant can last the same amount of time as a solar farm or wind turbine. That is just simply not true. A nuclear power plant, nuclear power plants are known to last from 60 to 80 years and with refurbishments can last for over a century. And why that's really important to the economics of nuclear is whilst you've got a nuclear power plant running, you might have to be replacing the same solar turbines, the solar panels and the wind turbines multiple times. And not only is there a cost related to actually producing those solar panels and those wind turbines, but in addition, there's often an undocumented cost associated with the disposal of those solar panels and wind turbines. Now, I think the bottom line here is this. A computer model drawn up by the CSIRO does not know more than the more than 50 countries around the world which are going to pursue nuclear for the first time and are seriously looking into it, or the 32 countries around the world which already have nuclear power. Ultimately, when people bring up this Gen Cost report, which is full of limitations, it is ultimately a distraction about having a genuine conversation about why nuclear power is still banned here in Australia. We are the only member of the G20 with a ban on nuclear power. And as all of those countries have shown, they've, they know that nuclear power is needed in order to ensure that they're able to reach net zero whilst keeping power prices down and having a reliable grid. So we, if we are really serious about addressing all of those challenges, we need to have a serious conversation about nuclear power and looking and basing all of our energy policies on a single report like this with such serious limitations, I think is gravely concerning. Look, I think you've put your finger on an absolute howler in that report. Uh, you could have also added, by the way, that the, the Netherlands, the new government there has just said... We're uh, turning back from these uh, manic uh, global warming uh, policies, uh, renewables. We are going to go for nuclear power as well. Now, Will, it's interesting, you know, like for decades I've been reporting on the global warming, uh, sorry, the anti-nuclear hysteria in this country that I think has marinated the Prime Minister and the, much of the Labor Party. There seems to be a shift now in attitudes to nuclear power. I find it fascinating that someone of your age now is daring to say what people twice your age uh, or three times your age do not yet dare say about mm. nuclear power, that it can work and would be a good idea and why don't we try it. Have you noticed any change in attitude yourself to nuclear power in this country? I think there has been a really major change in attitude and it's because so many people in Australia are concerned about climate change. And if you're concerned about climate change, well, why wouldn't you have nuclear power on the table? It's a zero emissions technology and it's the only guaranteed path to be able to get us to net zero in Australia. You look at France at the moment, they'd be generating about 100% of their power from low emission sources. They've already done this energy transition. And not only do they have some of the lowest power bills in the world, but they've also got extremely reliable electricity. Now, how have they done that? They haven't done it with a risky 100% renewables only approach like our government is currently trying to invent. What they've done is they've used around 65% nuclear. They were able to deploy around 50 reactors within 15 years. And now they're seen around the world as one of the best countries when it comes to addressing climate change. So that's a big thing. But I think there's a severe disconnect with our politicians where they're still lingering on with this fear mongering about nuclear power. You even have to look at the Labor Party today. 
and they're running ads where they've got nuclear big AI generated images of nuclear reactors behind the Sydney Opera House with big uh, mushroom clouds oh, above them. You can look it up on the internet. Uh -huh. And it's simply fear mongering. And oh. what it does most importantly is it undermines Australia's trust in Australia's nuclear science capability, which is so concerning. We've got a research reactor 30 kilometres from the Sydney CBD producing life saving nuclear medicines. And for politicians to basically uh, forget, forget the benefits of nuclear power and pursue ideology over the facts is, I think, really really concerning. Pathetic. They may as well uh, imagine, uh, a, a, you know, a wind turbine stuck in the sails of the Sydney Opera House, just as unlikely. Uh, Will Shackle, thank you so much indeed for your time. Terrific stuff.